You're tuned to Russ McClellan and Friends on the Real Estate Show Home Sweet Home. Let's get back to Russ. Hey, welcome back to Home Sweet Home Radio with Russ McClellan and my friend Jay Witherby. Hi, Jay. Morning again, Russ. Hey, we're having a good time talking about uh, craziness. Um, what are some of the fun, what, what are some of the, you know, in your history of being a mayor and being a business owner and uh, working at KOZ? I and all that for 10 years now you're real estate developing you've always dabbled in real estate and always done pretty well but we, we took our lumps in the recession but you're back in it you're doing a real estate development um how's it going that one's going really well working with uh, douglas county i've found them thus far douglas county transportation and land services to be very good to deal with they have their all their process what we want to know when you're developing is you, you just want to know what the rules are. I don't even care what the rules are. Mm -hmm. I don't care at all. I just want you to tell me the rules so I can decide whether or not the project is worth doing and then don't move the cheese on me. And if you do that, I'm happy. Like, I, get, I mean, it sounds crazy. I truly don't care what the rules are. Just tell me what they are. Yeah, it's the lack of predictability that, that makes investors squeamish about even getting in the game. And because of that, we, run out, we don't have enough real estate to develop. That's one, what you just said to me is the single biggest problem in government. Because if I'm a developer from North Carolina, and I look at the Northwest, or if I'm a developer right here in Wenatchee, like yourself, and if, if you can't tell me the game plan, and you tell me, to use your words, we're going to move the cheese, how am I supposed to, to determine my risk return? How am I supposed to determine my ROI, my rate of return, ah, return on investment? Um, it becomes very confusing. Now, you found that Douglas County, and there's some good guys over there, great commissioners, um, so it's always fun to see somebody like yourself take it on. Um, what's it going to end up being, you think? Uh, you know, we've got a, it's a small development, six acres, you know, 16 lots, it happens to be adjacent to the trail. The trail's a huge draw for people, you right. know, the people want to be on it. There's very, very little uh, land left to develop between the two bridges and, and on the, on the Douglas County side. And, and of course on the Chelan County side, there's, there's little if any at all so it's kind of tough but people you know people like that recreational side of things that's part of the draw to the chelan valley that's the draw to leavenworth that's the draw to central washington you know we've got some of the best you know natural beauty and mountains and rivers and creeks there are snow skiing so people like that that's that's a huge draw big selling point you know that yeah and your timing is is really good i hope you're i think you're going to do very very well on it um, as we look back, what what were some of the things in Chelan that you that stand out? Like some of the people that that we both knew that just good memories that you've had. You know, the, the really good people are gone. It seems like. I mean, I, I know that I still have lots of friends in mm -hmm. Chelan. Don't get me wrong. And you know, my wife's fourth generation Chelan Valley girl, and you know, her parents are deep in the orchard business. That's what they've done agriculture their whole lives, and her un uncles and grandparents. Uh, but, you know, it's a changing world, and, and that's okay. I mean, we, mm -hmm. we don't expect it to stay the same as much as we'd like to. That's not fair to the generation behind us. And so, like you said, they have, you know, the generation behind us and folks who live elsewhere have uh, every bit of right to be here as we do. I used to tell people that when I was still involved in politics. I mean, I don't want to, you know, be the bearer of bad news, but the gentleman who moved here yesterday has the exact same rights as your fourth-generation family. It's just... Yeah the way it works yeah and i think that's true i mean there is some good people i think i think of bernice i think oh, she man. was a big mentor of mine she forced me to buy her real estate company literally i was young and she's like you're buying it. i said i have no money she goes i don't care you're buying it <laughs> so <laughs> she i did what she said I was, uh, bernice was what you know i served on city council with her and uh, i was the mayor when she was a city council member and uh, when it, i remember i was mayor and it was uh, she, her term was expiring as city council and she said Jay, I'm not going to run again. I said, come on, Bernice, we're going for a drive. I drove her to Wenatchee, down to the county auditor's office, and we signed her up to, for another term. So that's, that's, how you, that's, how you, that's how politics are done. Yeah, it's, it, it was, it's been an amazing run. Like, I got into real estate, like you said, before the fax machine was invented, which is a long time ago. But to see all through 9-11, Y2K, the Great Recession, which was a, a very humbling experience. Uh, but a very good one. You know, I think as I look back at, at now running a show with almost uh, pushing 70 real estate brokers in almost every city in north central Washington from Leavenworth to Canada, um, it's been good because my goal is to share that with people. And, to you know, to me, I had to learn the hard way, too, that stuff doesn't mean much. 
you know, all, all that. It, at the end of the day, to me personally, everybody's different and whatever toots your horn's good. But for me, it just wasn't, when, when I had all the stuff, I wasn't that happy. And what I like doing is helping people. And I think you're like that too. You're a straight shooter that likes to help people. I think that's why not only was the paycheck important, but I think your addition to Rotary as president and all the things you've done to give back uh, to the community and help guide it with leadership that you should be commended and i think it's uh, it's admirable um that we had people like you and have people like you and, and like michael Steele and so many other people and doug england that has served and now we have a new race coming up i mean it never ends like you mm. said this little hamster on a wheel program mm. isn't un and we're not going to stop it right what do you think what do you think about the differences now that you've, you've moved down right to east wenatchee and uh, you know for me it was the right move uh you know i Theoretically, I was going to retire and not work any longer, and mm -hmm. it was funny because mm -hmm. people who knew me, friends and relatives, were saying, well, what's Jay going to do when you move to Wenatchee? Jennifer, my wife, still works. She's the executive director of the Washington Apple Education Foundation, yeah, so she spent job. like 20 years being Jay's wife. Now, <laughs> now I'm Jennifer's husband. You know, she's this year, you know, she was the... Um, uh, Apple Blossom, you know, Apple mm -hmm. Citizen of the Year this year, and she gets all Amazing these awards and rewards. And so now Jay is Jennifer's. Yeah, how'd you talk husband. her into getting love, loving you? Really? I have no idea. It's kind of weird. But she found this neat little place she wanted to live in East Wenatchee so she could commute on her bicycle to work, and she does that now. Wow. And uh, I was going to just, I don't know, I thought I was going to just, you know, read or something, but, you know, I couldn't sit still, and then I started buying some more real estate. And But yeah. I, looking back, I can tell you this much. Every piece of property I've ever owned, and I've owned a few, you know, personal homes, some condos, rentals, commercial property. I wish I owned every bit of it right now, Russ. Oh, man. I'm telling you, people, if, if, you're, if you're not in the real estate market and if you're young and you're wondering if you should be, the answer is yes. And never sell anything you don't have to. And even if you're going to make a bunch of money and turn it into a bunch more money, if, if I had every piece of real estate I ever owned, Russ, uh, I would not be dissatisfied, and I'm not, but I would be, it would not have been a bad move. No, that's very true, and what I tell people in this world of what I see happening, and I predict we're going to be busy for quite a while. Um, a guy told me once, because I said, hey, Seattle, everybody must be leaving Seattle. I had dinner with him at Duke's and on Lake Union about a month ago, and he said, he looked at me, and all he does is mortgages in downtown Seattle. He lives by Amazon's headquarters in a high-rise has a place on Vashon, has a sailboat, and he loves the lifestyle, but he has a place on Lake Chelan too. And he goes, Russ, think about this. The world's a big place, and Seattle's a little city. Because in my head, coming from a big fish little pond growing up, you know, 22 kids in my senior class, I thought, uh, you know, I've always had kind of a smaller vision, I guess, relative to some that are more worldly. I'm more countyly. I know where any at's at, right? So... Guys like that, and I think to myself, well, man, why would you live on that side of the mountains if you could live on this side? Man, we're going to get all these people. I bet the real estate market's going to soften. And he just said, no, he doesn't think so. He, it might, he said, but it's a big world, and the Northwest is pretty nice, and Seattle's a little city. So, And his point was there's people coming from everywhere to there, and then from there they'll come here, just kind of like California back in the day went north and now california's heading to you know it's a crazy time man mm -hmm. it's a strange strange time and i tell my brokers tell your buyers to just pay the price if it's over five grand ten grand when you can get money at two percent two and a half percent i would just buy it and what we're 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 seeing people have to learn that valuable lesson through not getting deals and I'm concerned if you keep thinking that you have to get that 20% off or 10% off an asking price, the market's going to keep appreciating. And if interest rates click back up, you might find yourself in double jeopardy a year from now. And wish you would have bought that one that you didn't get over five, 10 grand. That's, that's my theory, especially in that three to $500,000 mark, like you said. I mean, you get above that, there's a little more supply. But boy, anything in that 350 range, it's tough. Which is almost a starter home in today's world. Yeah, it is. I mean, it's a weird, it's a weird experience out there. But my advice, just pull the trigger. Like, get in the game. It's not too late. Uh, I think we always feel like, man, if I would have gotten a game yesterday or a year ago or 10 years ago. But to your point, if you're in the mood and you have the means, 
jump. <laughs> Be creative. Make it happen. Again, call a real estate broker. I mean, interview some people. I tell people all the time. I mean, there's a difference. It's like in any industry. We're not all built the same, right? Like, I mean, there's good and bad in every industry. And so I want people that are interviewing uh, me. I want them to interview other people. I want, yeah, ask me some tough questions. Ask your real estate broker some tough questions. If they, if they, if they just kind of say, uh, my strategy is the three P's. I don't know if you know what that is, but that's where you, uh, place the sign in the yard, put it in the MLS and pray somebody else sells it. <laughs> <laughs> if that's their answer to marketing strategy, you know, come talk to us. We have a different strategy <laughs> than that. Uh, uh, anything else, Jay, as I appreciate you, man, coming in on uh, Saturday, having a good time with me. It's, it's been fun reminiscing yeah. and, uh, uh future is bright very bright yep the goal is always this you know just have a good time the world's going to keep spinning on its axis everything's going to be okay take a big deep breath once in a while and uh next thing you know you've been around a while yeah it happens here I you're am. looking good <laughs> here i am all right thanks for uh, coming down we'll be back with prime lending and michael maher in just a few minutes